make of the Roger Stone video and the House committee's move in leaking it to the networks? It's unbelievable. It's part of the, a couple of things. On Roger Stone, Roger Stone was never an insider. He didn't last a few weeks with the Trump campaign, even though he was pushing Trump to run really since uh, 2008. Uh, what he said about it being a deep fake is hard to believe. I'm not sophisticated enough to think that I could put together a deep fake, but it's clearly him making a bad decision to talk to a crew he knew nothing about and say things that are totally irrational, which he had no control over. I'm never going to sit here and defend Roger Stone and, and his uh, antics, including the decision to talk to a crew that makes no, absolutely no sense. But this is part of the TV show that the January 6th is putting together. They probably have seven hours or 17 or 70 hours of Roger Stone. Okay, I need those three minutes. Put that together. I need Cassidy Hutchinson. I have all this stuff, but I need this mount. They're putting together a TV show by a TV producer. Uh, and I think, Howie, this, this country has changed dramatically since this January 6th right. committee got together. No longer, we we're talking about crime. We're talking about a cratering economy. We're talking about cataclysmic possibly a nuclear attack in Russia, and they'll keep going back to a horrific day in American history. But I'm not going to make excuses for a Roger Stone. Yeah, what well, he said, he you know, said. The deep fake thing is ridiculous because he has been cooperating. And look, he likes to be the center of attention. And Laura, this is a very uh, leaky committee that sends to put out its scoops to the media. But of course, the move backfired when the hurricane prompted a delay in the hearing. And by the time they get around to playing this, it's going to feel like very old news. Well, you know, I, I think of Casablanca with I'm shocked to find out gambling is going on in, in this establishment. Of course, <laughs> there's an, an inherent politicization and there's the number one goal of the January 6th committee is to document the facts. Secondarily, they they want to impact As public opinion them. so that we can persuade people that this should never happen again and so that we can prevent it. Those goals were on full display this week and I don't think that it was ineffective. I think it's a sign that in fact the January 6th committee has more damning information yet to come as they reschedule this hearing. And, and I, I, don't, I, I don't agree with Mr. Kilmeade that, that Roger Stone was not a Trump insider. He absolutely was throughout the administration. And his calls for violence put those closer and closer to the president. So I think the substance of the issue is more important than the structure of how it was released. I think now that you've made his television acquaintance, you can call him Brian. Uh, look, is the coverage of all this overdone? I mean, it was just constantly playing in a loop on CNN and MSNBC. And Stone, you know, who's pardoned by President Trump uh, for lying to Congress about the Russia investigation, right. has been in and out of favor. But what he says there does seem to reflect the whole uh, let's push and push and push and try to hang on to power, the whole uh, attitude of that. A couple of things, Howie. Number, number one. They are trying to tell a story, a horrific day. I'm not going to make excuses for the speech, and, and uh, I'm not going to talk about anything that says it's not so bad. I think it was a horrific day. So please don't take anything I say to minimize how horrible sure. that day was and how ill-advised giving the speech was. I'm never going to defend that. But I will say this. They are looking to tell one side of a story. Can you imagine if the impeachment after the Ukraine call was just what Democrats wanted to get out? It didn't mean what they were saying was inaccurate, but there was no pushback from Collins and others to say, listen, there's another side. So, for example, if I talk for six hours and you want one minute, you're going to use that one minute to tell your side of the story. Did anyone ever hear Donald Trump say, yeah, I lost? Uh, you know, and it's too bad. I'm going to have to go back to Mar-a-Lago. Did anybody say that Donald Trump had a different tone than has been publicly portrayed? You know, all these people around him, you didn't, you only see the time in which uh, Trump was unhinged and he was uh, irate. But there were other times in other books that have been written, there were anti-Trump that talked about him being resigned and understanding that he lost the election. Having said that, is that even part of this narrative on January 6th? That's what makes it so unbelievable. You're watching the Harlem Globetrotters play the Washington Generals every day. I know the outcome. <laughs> well, uh, the, the former president may have initially been resigned, but obviously he continues to push almost every day the narrative that the election was stolen. Laura, uh, how important, well, before we move on to uh, another topic, how important is this Roger Stone video? Because although... Uh, he cooperated with the filmmakers, and although it got all this play on the other two cable news networks, Fox News didn't cover it at all. Well, Brian's not defending Roger Stone for a reason. No one is defending Roger Stone. It's hard. And no one is defending President Trump on the airwaves. And I think that's why you don't see the other side presented, is because Republicans are running oh, away from this. 
There and, would and be. so it's I just mean, it, Jim. It, it, these oh, guys would have. They would have done it if they were. Where asked, are the conversations? Where why are the people they, that are defending and, Trump? Why, why, why they, are they? Why are you the only one, Brian? I mean, I think there's a reason. I'm it's not, because I'm it's not toxic. Trump. Because January sixth is challenging, and 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 it's it's a it is a dark day in American history, and it's one that we cannot repeat. And so to say that there's two sides to January sixth, I think is is missing the point. All right, let me jump in here because I want to turn to.